Hello and welcome to our conference session of distribution automation, medium voltage and low voltage grid. My name is Oliver Schrödel. I'm senior key expert for distribution automation systems and application. Let's start with a table of contents for the session. Today I will speak about the following topics. The future of distribution automation, intelligent grid automation for overhead lines, intelligent secondary substation for cable grid, distribution grid application self-optimizing grid. And last but not least, I will summarize. The future of energy systems are subjected to considerable challenges. The distribution network operator must deal with many new topics. Embrace electrification. Tackle efficiency. Connect infrastructure where decentralized power supply or volatile feed-in and load scenarios. The increasing number of consumers will simultaneously assume the role of producers or increased requirements from electromobility play a decisive role. And engage IoT, where grid edge devices of distribution automation helps to maintain the grid. The scope of the distribution automation is shown here in the medium and low voltage level. The grid is following two fundamental design criteria. On the left side, the cable grid topology mainly using secondary substations. And on the right side, the overhead line topology, mainly using pole mounted devices. Let's start with a modern concept for smart grid of the future. It's a stepwise approach, starting from grid monitoring, signaling and measurements. Going over to grid control, where basic control functionality and protection is integrated. This leads finally to grid management, intelligent applications, which are therefore local automation functionality, load balancing, automatic sound transfer, and so on. All of these three pillars are connected to the control center for grid monitoring, grid control, and grid management functionalities. And now, a new player is coming to the game, the cloud. But if we look a little bit more in detail, then we see that the cloud is mainly focusing on the grid monitoring. Let's start with the first topology of distribution grid, the intelligent grid automation for our overhead lines. Here you see a classical layout of a distribution network on overhead lines. On the left hand side, you see the basic automation or even the low automation for monitoring and local operation. On the second pillar, you see here the feeder automation. So where you have remote and control abilities from scalar system, but no clever functionality included. And the third architecture, the smart grid architecture based on new protocols, new functions, new applications, based, for example, here on IEC 61 and 50. But let's focus first on the first pillar, on the grid monitoring and edge devices for overhead lines. Therefore, we have a combination of SICAM FSI and SICAM FCGs. These kind of devices are directly mounted on the overhead lines and communicating via the SICAM FCG, the fault collector gateway to the cloud. This kind of functionality is poorly there for monitoring short circuits, earth faults in the overhead line to get an indication where the fault is located. These information are also shipped to SCADA. And that is the detail of these kind of application. You see here the FSI which is mounted on the distribution grid and the FCG which is on, mounted on the pole. Via the cloud connectivity to MindSphere, these kind of information are provided to the SICAM localizer application which is a part 
of the SICOM grid suite. Let's start with the second pillar, the feeder automation for overhead line. The feeder automation system for overhead line are mainly based on reclosers. Reclosers are circuit breakers which are pole mounted. Therefore, recloser controllers take the action of the protective device. Here, the Siemens Railroad SR224 is a perfect device for these kind of local automation on reclosers. It has the basic functionality which needs on these kind of application. It's based on recloser cycles, on for example six voltage inputs and different curves and parameters for these kind of overhead line devices. So let's come from the feeder automation to the smart grid automation. Therefore, we have here our Cyprotec 7 SE80 device, our very, very intelligent devices, which is not only able to control recloser, it has also the ability to control a local decentralized application of self-healing. In this compact design, everything is included what for a clever application of self-healing is needed. The self-healing application is based on IC6150 Qs and helps to operate an automatic reconfiguration in milliseconds. So let's have a look to the self-healing application on the 7SC80 in detail. Here we see a typical overhead line network based for the 7SC80. In case of a fault, the in-feed protection relay of the 7SC80 is tripping and the ring is unpowered. But with the 7SC80 in a decentralized functionality, it's not only able to detect the fault in the primary substation, we have also the fault on the different lines. And so we are able to identify in detail which kind of segment needs to be isolated and to restore the power in seconds closing the normally open point and the in-feed. This kind of application is based on IEC 6150 and goose messages and can resupply the ring in milliseconds, up to 500 milliseconds. Let's come to the next topic, grid automation for cable grids. The intelligent grid automation for cable grids is mainly based on secondary substations. These kind of secondary substations are cost-efficient ringman units which integrates all necessary parts. It has IoT connectivity integrated and the applications are standardized on IC communication protocols. It has integrated smart sensor technologies and intelligent low voltage components. All these together are the Siemens solution for digitalization, decarbonization and decentralization. The heart of the secondary substation is the SICAM A8000, our gateway to SCADA and to the cloud. We have different modules of the SICAM A8000, starting with the CP800 over to the CP8021 and 22. That are the most common used CPUs in the domain of the distribution automation. And all these kind of different CPUs can be parameterized on the SICAMP device manager, our one engineering tool for the whole family. The SICAMP A8000 CPUs can be extended by various extension modules. These kinds of modules are perfectly tailored for the usage in the secondary substation. We have here different digital output cards, like here the AT2012, or digital input cards, the AT1110, which are perfectly for the setup of controlling load breakers and station signals. In addition, we have an I.O. card perfectly tailored for the PT100 to get temperature from the station or from the transformer. And in addition, we have cards which simulates our SICAM FCM functionality. The SICAM FCM is a feeder condition monitoring system which is able to control and monitor each feeder to get fault indication, currents, voltages 
all relevant data of a feeder in a medium voltage bay. These kind of information are provided by sensors. And if you look a little bit to the bottom right, you see the sensors which are able to provide us the data for the voltages and for the current. We use here special low voltage sensors which have a very, very high currency of 99.5% and very easy to install. The Zycam FCM is also able to be used in the low voltage grid. And that is the benefit of these kind of architecture in the distribution substation based on Zycam A8000 family and based on Zycam FCM. All these kind of data provide all the all relevant information of the whole station coming from medium voltage and to low voltage grid. So you don't have the zoo of different devices in your station. On the right hand side you see our special designed low voltage sensor for the Sycam FCM. It's a low power wide range sensor which is perfectly tailored for the installation in the secondary stations. In addition, we have the Sycam FPI, the fault passage indicator, which has only the functionality to indicate faults in the distribution grid. It's able to indicate overcurrent and earth faults. It has a very, very compact design, and with this kind of predefined setup, it's very easy to install in the stations. Let's have a look to the full architecture of our secondary distribution substation. In the middle, you see the distribution automation box, which is based on Incycam A8000. That is the heart, the centerpiece of our secondary substation. In the bottom line, you see the devices which are mounted in the secondary substations, starting with the Incycam FCM in each bay of the medium voltage bay to the power meter controlling the power quality of the station and again the Sycam FCM in the low voltage feeder branches. In addition we can get the status from the medium voltage and the low voltage bay and also have the ability to control medium voltage load breakers and low voltage load breakers. In the next slide you see the integration in our 8 DJH ring main unit of Siemens. For easy installation, all the sensors and all the measuring devices are already equipped in the Ringman unit. But our gateway, the IoT devices, are here separated in a distribution automation box. These kind of distribution automation boxes are pre-configured and easy to connect. By predefined plugs, you can easily plug and play and makes these kind of prepared station to an intelligent IoT integrated station. Now let's step to the next topic, the distribution grid applications. You saw in the history our offering of the overhead lines, our integration in the cable grids, and now we put all these kind of parts and pieces together in an application. And I'd like to present you today the SICAM application of self-optimizing grid. The self-optimizing grid is an application which integrates the most relevant use cases of the distribution grid, mainly based on self-healing to reduce the outages, to do load management, so to reconnect loads in case of an overload, overload reduction, and Area voltage control, which controls the voltage in a certain region. And the topic of automatic source transfer, so if we get loose of power of a transformer, that we only do a very, very fast switch over. These are the most relevant use cases in the distribution automation arena. And we connect all these use cases in one application, which is called the Sycam application of self-optimizing grid. Here you see the architecture of the self-optimizing grid. You see the self-optimizing grid is somewhere between the field devices and the secondary stations, somewhere in the primary substation level and below the scalar level. It connects all relevant data of the different levels and integrates the applications. 
And here you see the HMI of an SACM SCC. The application shows here a simple ring configuration. On the left hand side you see a transformer, then two infeed stations and a simple ring configuration. On the top bar you see the operational panel where you see the different functions which can be enabled and disabled or even you see the status. In the beginning the system is in idle. So all relevant data are processed in the SciCamp PAS and it takes a monitoring view on the total grid. In case of a fault, which is here in the node, the system gets noticed by the different devices in the field level. That can be the SciCamp FCM with the SciCamp A8000 combination or an overhead line controller based on the Cyprotec R7 SC80 device. This kind of information is shipped to the SICAM PAS and the SICAM PAS starts the isolation after the infrared device is tripping. You see here the ring around the green device which means here this kind of device starts the tripping and the isolation starts now in detail. Based on the indications which are here in directional manner, the system is able to detect very very in detail where the fault is, in this case on the node. And it starts by blocking the devices and open the devices for isolation, these kind of faulty area. Afterwards, it starts with reconfiguration. That means the grid is now reconfigured for the new supply. That means that the infeed is closed again to supply the first part of the ring and also the normally open point on the right hand side is also closed to support the rest of the ring. This configuration needs only the basic information from the field level and puts the automation, in this case of the cell filling on top. In addition, applications can be also extended to load management, overload reduction or voltage regulation. Afterwards, the system gets back to idle and waits for the next event. Very, very simple, very, very fast and without any human intervention. That is the benefit and the beauty of these kind of applications because if a lot of automation devices are in the field, a lot of information get, needs to be processed. And these information we can process in a decentralized manner like here with a self-optimizing grid. Let's come to the summary. Distribution automation has a positive impact of the reliability and efficient operation of distribution grids. Impressive figures are measured on our pilot project in combining distribution automation devices with closed loop application of self-optimizing grid. 75% of savings in comparison on the initial investment compared to copper installation and reduction of outage time over four times less. And last but not least, a very, very impressive figure, the degree of automation of approximately 15% results in a more than 80% improvement in availability. Thanks a lot for watching. That was my presentation.